for the Huron. Ryan Miller, we're waking up. Sunshine, a drier day. Watch out for a little bit of ice in our western and far western suburbs because of the rain from yesterday and the residual moisture that's lingering and that and the cold temperatures. We're going to see 40s, upper 40s today with winds out of the west anywhere between 15 and 25 miles per hour. Sunshine, nice start to the work week, but we're on the weather alert, folks. Tuesday, big time rain and big time wind. Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening coming in here. It's going to remain breezy into Wednesday, and then another chance we can see some sleet and some rain on Saturday. Got a lot to keep track of there, Ryan. All right, thank you very much. And a reminder, you can get the latest news and weather anytime with the NBC Washington app. For now, back to Sunday today. Have a great day. Miranda Priestley in the 2006 classic The Devil Wears Prada. That memorable performance earned Blunt a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress. 17 years later, she's nominated in that category again at tonight's 81st Golden Globe Awards. This time for playing Kitty Oppenheimer, wife of the Bob, in the Christopher Nolan epic Oppenheimer. Blunt's nomination is one of eight for the movie of the Globes. And the latest acclaim for the 40-year-old London native over her two decades of work, occasionally alongside her husband, John Krasinski. Emily and I got together in New York the other day for a Sunday sit-down. This is a national emergency. Nearly six months after the release of Oppenheimer, the movie's explosive success continues as it closes in on a billion dollars at the box office. Stars as J. Robert Oppenheimer, with an all star supporting cast that includes Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, and Emily Blunt. There's only sign this way, best families will never get the best. Blunt plays the other Oppenheimer, Robert's wife, Kitty. What has this ride been like for you to sit back because there was a strike and just watch it all happen? I feel like we're all still kind of awestruck by the reaction. Were you sort of talking to each other behind the scenes saying, wow, this thing's really taken off? Yeah. Yes, I mean, we're all on this chain. There's something called an mm -hmm. Open Hermes chain, but <laughs> <laughs> so many wows and expletives and just like everyone just jaws on the floor when it came out and became like a runaway train. This is Open Harbor. Did you have a Communist Party membership card? I'm not sure. Not sure. What was your initial reaction when Chris came to you and said, here's the character, Kitty Oppenheimer, wife of the yeah. man who created the A-bomb and was haunted by it? I ran to meet him. And I remember him coming in afterwards after I'd finished reading him. And I couldn't even form thoughts. I just said, I'm so emotional reading this script. It's just extraordinary. And what was it about Kitty that she fell in love with? She was just... A rebel. There was just a refusal to contort herself into being the housewife ideal. And I mean, he was her fourth husband when she was 29. So it tells you what you need to know about that. And the two of them meeting, it was like two comets coming together. Wake up! It is straws. It's always been straws, and you know it. Why won't you fight it? There are people who are talking about your performance in a way that could win awards next year. Is that... <laughs> is that... Do you see me like very... It's like for the, for the British that is like... Whoa. I like to make my guests deeply uncomfortable. Good, good. So good. Is that significant to you? Is it important to you? How does that sound? I find it deeply moving. It means so much to me that people talk about me in that way. You don't set out to elicit that reaction. I love the work so much. I'm in love with this job. I'm in love with this movie. And if people are talking about me in that way, I'm so thrilled. <laughs> Like that, but 
was so unexpected in any of us. It was a celebration. It didn't mean that one was pitted against the other. I hadn't realized how much of a moment we were a part of until just because of this strike, I never got to see it with an audience. We managed to get two tickets to an IMAX in Nyack, New York, in a shopping mall in a 4 p.m. screening, like opening weekend. We were like, we're going. You and Jack? Yeah. And we snuck in the back when it went dark, and we saw a group of boys coming in dressed as Oppenheimer. Come on. At 4 p.m. at Nyack, with like pipes dangling out their mouths. <laughs> I still get chills thinking about it, and I called Killian afterwards, I was like, this is more than a movie. This is more than a movie. This is a movie. I'm just kidding. In her next movie, Blunt Stars, with Ken himself. So how are you
Sunday today. Our highs and lows are going to be concluding the story behind the 16-year-old sensation who became an international exception during his improbable run to the final of the World Darts Championship. But up next, the wonderful story of a small town rallying to save its only grocery store. We are back in just 60 seconds.